Hello everyone. Welcome to Science and Tech series with Dr. Vivek Rana. First of all, greetings on occasion of World Environment Day. So today was UPSC prelims 2022 examination as well. So we'll be decoding science and environment section of UPSC prelims. So as we have seen from last three or four years, the level of examination has gone up. So this year was no exception as well. and there is a considerable decline in cutoffs in 2019 in general category the cutoff was 98 in 2020 it was reduced to 92 and in 2021 the cutoff was just 87 so let's hope uh, this uh, decline in cutoff trend rests soon and hopefully this could be one of the papers where we might see some incremental increase in uh, cutoffs So, but still, it's early days. Let's uh, it will take considerable time to arrive at what exactly could be the cutoff. We will be focusing in this lecture just on the questions asked in science and environment section because uh, environment section was once again bit on tricky side. In science and tech, the general golden rule of marking all of the above option has once again proved dividends. So first of all, uh, uh, the first question which I am taking up is on expected lines. We had covered this in the nuclear energy theme. We know India is working really, seriously on uh, third stage nuclear development program, which involves generating energy from thorium. So they have asked a question on monazite, in which there are four statements. The first statement says that monazite is source of rare earth. The second says it contains thorium. The third said it occurs naturally in entire Indian coast, and the fourth one is that government bodies can only process or export such commodities. So in this question, you just have to apply the basic theme that monazite sand is present in mainly in the Kerala coast, and when we say the entire coast of India, it means you are uh, including right from Gujarat to the Kolkata. So it, it's not such a, such a common resource and. so this option had to be laminated yes monazite it contains thorium and rare earth element like lanthanides and also government is the only sole entity you cannot any private sector can mine this precious resource so answer to this question is b option 1 2 and 4 hopefully most of you might have got this one right now the next question is once again on expected lines we have seen that india has made some rapid strides in biodiversity conservation especially in terms of wetlands because india was uh, early signatory to ramsar convention and we had seen we had around 27 ramsar sites for considerable period of time but in last two or three years we can say the list has jumped to 49 so we were expecting a conventional or some tricky question from this section so they have more or uh, less asked uh, theme on uh, the expected lines the conventional the uh, ramsar sites which were earlier included they have asked them so th they have asked in the given question correct the uh, match pairs so okera they have mentioned with punjab which is a wrong option we have covered in our class lecture that okera wetland uh, is in jnk then renuka wetland himachal pradesh is uh, not a tough not to prepare especially for north students we know renuka fair is organized and apart from chandar uh, chandar tal and you could say the uh, the pong dam this is the third himachal site which is included in ramsar site so this was not too difficult to attempt and rudra sagar we had discussed in our class lecture the name looks like of central india rudra prayag but this is in tripura this is a north eastern site so this one is a correctly match and sastam kota do you uh, and uh, recall the astmudi sastam kota wetlands were in kerala so this one is once again wrong they have mentioned the tamil nadu states so if you are map work is thorough and you are considerably confident about these sites so this question was once again we can say an attemptable question so right answer is b option two pairs are correct now uh, there were few question on general science uh, which are given in scattered so i will be taking them one by one so 
they have asked uh, which of the following statements best describes role of b and t cells uh, now we know the b and t cells refers to the lymphocyte section and in general sign section we know it's the white blood cells which play uh, act as soldiers or body's defense system and there are five types of you could say wbcs neutrophil lymphocytes monocytes eosinophils basophils so out of these the b and t lymphocytes were in use because immunization drive is taking place and antibodies are being produced so out of given option you could say the d option which says that they protect body from diseases caused by pathogen basically they are asking about the antibody part is the correct option so you have to choose the d option in this coming to the next question uh, nanotechnology is once again a science and tech part uh, you can say it's one of the emerging technologies and current decade is being described as the year of nanotechnology so there are a lot of applications but at same time they are also facing some controversies as well so it's a mixed bag for nanotech in the first option they have mentioned that nanotech uh, cannot exist in nature nanoparticles which is uh, you could say a extreme statement we all know that biology and science all are science of exceptions even though the most of the products which we are creating in our human welfare are artificially synthesized carbon nanotubes titanium oxide you know gold nanoparticles they are all uh, been operated in lab but if we say that no particle exists in nature which is less than 10 raised to the 9 or is not visible to eye then that could be uh, extreme blender lot of you could say ore and especially kaolinite as well as saffonite are the specific example in nature which are ideally nanoparticles so first statement you have to eliminate the second one that some metallic oxides are being used for cosmetics as i have just mentioned zinc oxide or titanium oxide these are but uh, do not produce whitish tinge when you are using them as cream so second statement is correct and the third one that some nanoparticles may cause environmental pollution and are unsafe which we have mentioned uh, in our mains uh, lectures that nanotoxicity and nano pollution are some of the eminent dangers which need to be addressed on priority so the answer is d option 2 and 3 Uh, there is another question on biotechnology which uh, goes you know, which is asking applications of dna barcoding we all know in biotechnology the application part is the most important one so out of the three application which they have mentioned the one says that it will be used to assess age of plant and animal the second says that distinguish among the species now you know the dna pattern is unique there are v and trs so this one is the ideal option we use dna fingerprinting as well as this bar coding and other dna profiling methods for identifying the exact species and the third one also holds true they were mentioning that undesirable animal or plant materials on processed food because this bar coding is being used in processing industry as well only the first part we true exact genetic sequence because that remains same throughout the year you cannot determine the age of plant or animal because we will only determine the sequence you can establish paternity or you could say the identity of individual but to determine age may not be the best option so you have to choose the d option as such there was no uh, option which was saying you have to include all of the above so this once again if you have specific idea about the dna uh, fingerprinting bar coding or similar technologies you could have arrived at the right answer now the next one was the probably the easiest question out of the overall 30 question which have been asked from science and environment it was, they have just asked about the chemicals which can cause acid rain now acid rain we mainly know oxides of nitrogen and oxides of sulfur are the main uh, chemicals responsible for acid rain they produce sulfurous acid and nitric acid uh, which are catastrophic for the species like lichens as well as for monuments for causing corrosion Uh, ozone has no role whatsoever so you could have easily eliminated the ozone option and you could have arrived at the answer and this was the probably the easiest one in the uh, section of environment apart from that uh, there is uh, another couple of question we have seen that currently government is contemplating amending wildlife protection act and some of the clauses would be amended it's uh, thinking of reducing schedules from 6 to 4 so they have asked a question on the wildlife uh, conservation the first statement says that wild animals are the sole property of the government which we clearly understand that state government as well as the union government are the sole entities which are governing 
this national asset so that's the correct option and the second one says once the animal is protected it would be entitled for equal protection whether it's in protected areas otherwise any species which is mentioned in schedule 1 2 3 4 they get equal protection and if you are not following those you know, basic clauses you are likely to be imposed hefty fines and even imprisonment so second option also holds true the third statement is a bit subjective. They are saying that apprehension of protected wild animal being a danger to human life is sufficient ground for its uh, killing. So here you know, we have to understand this, uh, the schedule 5 of vermin clause uh, comes into the picture as well as only the warden, chief wildlife warden is a responsible entity who takes decision whether animals to be killed or not. And generally if animal is diseased or is suffering from some deformity or you could say some disease which it is not likely to recover or it's posing a serious threat to man animal life due to rising man animal conflict only then it has to be eliminated so you can say one and two is the best option in the given combination then there is a question on ecology we know the uh, inter interactions between the community is a stable topic in ecology which is generally asked more or less but they uh, have asked that certain species of which one of the following organisms are well known cultivators of fungi because fungi we know is an organism it's either a saprophyte or it acts as a parasite so in given combination of the cockroach crab spider and ant ant and the fungi show a bit of you could say mutualism the ants collect the leaves and fungi needs organic matter when it's uh, living as a saprophyte and that's where this particular interaction is a uh, falls under but this uh, example is not given properly in you could say ncrt it's only in zoology optional book so some of you might have find uh, this one tricky or difficult to attempt because otherwise in other organisms fungi if it's occurring accidentally it's more likely to be a parasite because they are asking about the cultivators you so only ants could be the probable answer in it so in case you have messed this one up uh, it is more or less uh, an acceptable mistake now I am having set B with me. So these were some of the scattered questions from science and environment. So if I have first uh, decoded them. Now uh, the more or less the next questions are in sequence. So you can just match uh, whichever set you are having. So this is set B. The first question says climate action tracker monitors emission reduction pledges of different countries. So first of all you have to understand uh, every year almost two to three questions on uh, these lines of international agreements or bodies or you could say environment organizations they are more or less unattemptable because of the vagueness and more or less they are not uh, too much in news so this one was an almost an unattemptable question if you will search on it you will find only a couple of websites uh, just showcasing two or three lines uh, about the theme so in case if you have not attempted this question that was probably the good choice but if you have write an answer through guesswork then you could say you have earned two extra marks so the a option the database created by coalition of research organization because primarily it's the research organizations which are collaborating and then measuring the carbon emission and publishing the reports even though that one of the reports was published in cop26 but it was not well publicized now the another question the second question which asks focuses once again on an entity which is not too uh, much in new the climate group now uh, in this question you the only way to attempt this was if you know that the second institution which they have mentioned international uh, you could say energy agency they are working on uh, two different themes so there are five options out of which they have mentioned that some companies are part of uh, environmental initiative ep100 uh, which is primarily of climate group so the in, international energy agency it's uh, associated with oecd so it's a, a something related to the oil you could say the wing whereas the climate group is uh, focusing on renewables and switch over to cleaner technology so you have to eliminate the second and you could say the fifth option which are related to international energy agency because these two are two uh, different themes so this was once again a tough nut to crack if you have not attempted this one or you have messed it up it's once again uh, you don't have to feel too guilty about it now coming to the third uh, even though it's once again from wetlands way as we have just discussed one of the factual question about the sites but this one is more on conceptual lines 
you have to understand the statement it says if rainforest and tropical forest are lungs of earth we have seen amazon being related to uh, amazon rainforest being related to lungs of world uh, then surely wetlands function as its kidneys so they are emphasizing the role of wetlands now here the key word is kidney because in biology we know kidneys function as osmo regulators they help in maintaining water balance and filter the impurities because it's the main excretory organ because the options which they have given in are almost the major function which a common wetland performs but when you are linking it to kidneys the best option which uh, holds the ground would be the d option that the aquatic plants which are the main plants uh, we could say the hydrophytes in wetland they mainly absorb heavy metal and excess pollutants so in a way they are filtering the ecosystem by absorbing the toxic things so so, uh, so this one uh, involved the conceptual parity of bio if you know what the role of kidney is then the functions uh, could have been linked uh, with it otherwise all other functions are also uh, related to wetland but they cannot be equated with the function and you could go through this statement to ramsar convention there also they have highlighted how kidneys wetland function as kidneys now the next question is on who air quality guidelines now this one is once again a tough nut because they have asked about the specific values related to particulate matter so if you have a strong memory only then you could have recalled the statement that the 24 hour mean of pm 2.5 is should not exceed 15 you could say microgram millimeter cube and annual 5 mg but once again if you have to take a risk you can uh, yeah, anticipate that upsc generally does not ask, uh, ask factual questions in of such nature so more or less the statements should have been correct only and then the second statement is once again tricky it says the highest level of the ozone pollution occurs during period of inclement weather now this is a extreme cold windy weather which is the inclement generally we have seen the ozone hole size gets maximum during spring season because it's the sunlight uh, which is associated so the second statement is wrong and the third statement which says pm10 can penetrate lung barrier and enter the blood stream once again uh, we have discussed in our class also that pm2.5 is more dangerous because due to its small size because these size pm2.5 and 10 are representing at micro level 10 raised to the minus 6 so only 2.5 uh, enter the cross the lung barrier or bronchioles and enter eventually lung system and they can enter the blood stream so ideally it should have been pm 2.5 so you can eliminate this option as well and the final option even though it's not technically correct it says that excessive ozone can trigger asthma generally ozone can be an aggravating factor but still uh, out of the given combination uh, we, there is no such option which is mentioning only one so you have to choose one and four option in the given answer even though this is not one of the best uh, questions which have been framed in given set then coming to gucci uh, uh, which is sometimes seen in news it was in news because we have seen uh, current prime minister narendra modi is taking uh, mushroom which is quite costly it's around uh, in inter- you could say in national market also it cost around 10000 to 30000 per kilogram so there were lot of articles because at times uh, uh, that's a uh, the theme of discussion that what is narendra modi's diet how is so active and dynamic all the time so in, in that context we have gone through that article only then this question could have been attempted so uh, we know that uh, all these mushrooms represent fungi group so first option was not too tricky to uh, to be decode the second says it grows in some himalayan forest areas once again uh, this is particular mushroom it grows is endemic only to you could say high altitude specifically in himalayas it's not uh, overall well distributed across the world so second statement is also correct in third they have uh, asked uh, mentioned about the that it's found in foothills of northeastern states now this one uh, once again is uh, is not the technically sound option because uh, if you will search you will find that this particular mushroom is found only in you could say kangra region kullu valley of himachal pradesh and jnk so only these st- uh, states you can find this gucci mushroom so it's quite an interesting question but once again a tough one to crack so answer is c option 1 and 
then coming to pe uh, the, the, so this uh, chemical has been in news uh, in 2018 19 or 20 most of the time so if you are a new student there is a possibility you might not have come across some direct current affair to, to poly, you could say polyethyl terephthalate and uh, there could be a subjectivity in answer because only option which you could link uh, clearly with is it that it can be it is a recyclable material that's why it is used for multiple uh, products and it's used to store mainly you could say the water as well as soft drinks and conventionally till 2016 it was also used for some hard drinks like alcoholic drinks as well so that's where you could say some vagueness come so some of you might think the answer might be two and three but some of you might be uh, linking one and three option because it can be used for reinforcing properties as well now coming to the seventh question which of the following is not a bird so you could place this in environment or you could say the general biology zoology part so out of these golden mahasir if you are uh, solved previous year question there was a question in ups on golden mahasir it's a large fish which is generally found in you could say peninsular india as well as in upper belts of himachal pradesh as well himachal pradesh is also creating special farm for golden mahasir so golden mahasir is a fish all other spoonbill night jar these are the birds the spoonbill sandpiper is a critically endangered bird which we have uh, decoded earlier as well so this one is once again only bio students or people who uh, love bird watching uh, they might have been more comfort at this particular question now the eighth question is once again a tough question because they have mentioned six plants and you have to filter out which among those are nitrogen fixing because we know leguminous family or you could say the pea family are the uh, plants are the commonly occurring naturally nitrogen fixing plants so uh, alpha alpha is another one if you are pre your preparation is of next level you might have uh, arrived at alpha alpha and clover as well but otherwise it's a tough nut and uh, the two species which were in use the, like they have ursulan and amaranth they are helpful species from health aspect but they are not too directly related to nitrogen fixation so answer to this question is quite a specific one the a option which uh, says one three four uh, alpha alpha chickpea and you could say clover because clover there is no doubt it's a nitrogen fixing plant and uh, there is no too direct linkage with spinach so out of the given combination a option is one which you have to write so this uh, might have been uh, one question which most of you could have left it unattempted or if, if you have attempted through a guesswork you might not have arrived at the right answer now bio rock technology is once again an emerging trend because we have seen the highest threat perception being faced by the most biodiverse ecosystem of the world the coral reef so in aquatic we have seen the coral reef system needs to be preserved and so this bedrock technology you could say bio rock technology is associated with that uh, conservation only the another one is once again uh, something which was in news couple of years back not immediately this year so the students who are appearing for the first time might have found the, the next tenth question also tricky miyawaki method because it's a japanese method where they are using the urban landscape to create small small forests they are promoting fast growth of you could say seedlings and promoting uh, for the fresh you could say the vegetables as well as the forest product so uh, it's a good concept and lot of some smart cities campaigns are adopting this model so you have to choose the c option so this was more or less the environment the section which had some uh, tricky question but you should not be too bothered because we have seen some sections are attemptable some are on tricky lines and generally it's the biodiversity section which is always a tough nut to crack now coming to the science and tech part 11th question they have asked they have mentioned some famous you could say government apps which are making headlines and they have just tried to associate which of them are open source digital platform open source which are easily accessible and you could easily use them update them and use uh, your data so uh, uh, due to covid pandemic we have seen it sector coming into play and uh, making things easier for us so Arogya Setu, Povin they both were associated with the COVID management pandemic Digi Locker is for our document it is easily accessible and Diksha is once again which was in time so you have to choose one two three four in the given option now uh, every year there are a couple of questions on emerging technologies so the next question falls in that domain only we have seen 
how web is is evolving now web 3 is a buzzword just like uh, some of the themes we do internet of things 5g technology augmented virtual so it's domain of that so either you if you have gone through it you would have been positioned to attempt otherwise you have to make some educated guesses so it says that it enable people to control their own data because currently we see that it's the you could say super giants or the internet servers which are having the it's the companies which are ruling the roost but in web 3 there will be decentralization and it would be the individuals who will have better access and control over their data which is on you could say the strong advocates of privacy are welcoming this development and then uh, there can be blockchain technology because we have seen a lot of debate going about the cryptocurrencies but the technology behind those cryptocurrencies blockchain is quite a innovative technology we have already seen couple of questions in upsc as well so in blockchain uh, is the buzzword which will trigger these uh, apps and applications so this one is once again a correct one and coming to that it will be operated collectively rather than users collectively rather than corporation once again it's the uh, the main uh, application or you could say the advantage which is being uh, touted uh, by the advocates of web3 so this one is once again true so 1 2 3 once again the way, as we say generally questions of science and tech end up with the being just being the information givers so the trend has continued and then 13 uh, if you are following are uh, are too tech savvy or from it background this should not come as a surprise because there are various uh, kinds of these uh, services in cloud computing s double a s being one of them other being the i double a s you know, infrastructure as a service so, but they have focused on software as a service this time so uh, if you are the email the you could say the major players like the hotmail yahoo they all represent this software as a service where you can edit your tools as well as customize your user interface so once again the, all the information which they have given are correct you have to choose 1 2 and 3 14th is once again uh, one of the themes which uh, dominated headlines in 2021 because we have seen that china has taken a giant leap in developing the next generation weapons which are been described as hypersonic technology weapons they are missile cir- circumnavigated entire globe uh, because we have seen there are two types of missile ballistic and cruise ballistic ones travel to the outer atmosphere so if a country has a you could say well developed radar system there are possibility that it can be intercepted to interceptor technology uh, but these cruise missile generally travel close to the surface and they are not easy to detect so this technology they, they have mentioned fractional orbital bombardment system was the term which was used when china developed this weapon so out of the given option the c option which says that missile is put first into stable orbit around the earth and then it de orbits to a, a specific a targets so uh, if you have gone through that current affair of uh, and that to on a deeper basis only then this development you have come across so this is the question from one from the defense section now 15th question more or less i hope everyone must have got it right they have just about asked about a term which is qubit now uh, indian budget in 2020 had mentioned about the quest program quantum enabled science and technology and we have seen china and usa taking giant leaps in quantum communications you could say google sycamore or china's juzang have already attained quantum supremacy so this quantum is different from the conventional computer which works on bits and qubits is the term which is used to describe their progress so you have to choose the quantum computer so once again this was an attemptable question coming to next question they have uh, mentioned about the rfid which we are using in the fast tags then closed circuit television is nothing but cctvs and then wireless lan which we are all using so overall they are asked about the short range technologies which are used in the short distance so all three you could say uh, if you say working of their them is ideally optimized at short distance only so once again the answer is all of the above now the next question is from biotech or you could say the life sciences the biofilms is the films which is created by the microorganisms when they are growing so the first option says that they can form on medical uh, implants on human tissues which is a correct observation we have seen rise in uh, such disorders especially in artificial stents which are placed or some 
other devices which are used to treat lot of uh, tissues at times if they are not well kept microorganisms tend to thrive on them and which can be a source of infection as well the second says that they can form on food and processing surfaces already we have seen nanotech biosensors being developed to detect such biofilms they it's a low cost method so this is once again a negative site or to check the microorganisms and they can ex exhibit antibiotic resistance once again we have seen that in medicine section it's the antimicrobial resistance uh, which is dominating headline so this is once again no exception it is because these biofilms your know, microorganisms are also adapting due to natural selection mutation or you could say general overuse and we have seen already there are some bacteria which produce biofilms and they are already in the resistant because the, the long list of there is a long list of microorganisms which are showing antimicrobial resistance so once again the golden rule of all of the above once again applies in this question given case we had a limited idea about the theme you could have made an educated guess the next one is once again from biotech section probiotics you might have used uh, uh, in your life as well so these are made of mainly of you could say the yeast saccharomyces as well as bacteria like lactobacillus so these are the you could say are given to individuals in which we have seen there is some complication or just uh, for nutrient nutritional enhancement as well sometimes the useful bacteria uh, might not be producing the product so in, there is no harm in taking at that time the probiotics so the second question uh, statement says that organisms in probiotics are found in foods we ingest but they are, do not occur naturally in the gut which is a wrong statement we have seen that in colon specifically in large intestine there are lot of useful bacteria which are similar to the ones which we are giving in probiotics they synthesize vitamin k folic acid and vitamin b12 so the second statement is wrong and they help in digestion of milk sugar this is one of their benefits so Uh, answer is a specific one but in this question there was no such option like 1 2 3 so you had to arrive at the best combination so once again this question could have been decoded so c option is 1 and 3 is the right answer now coming to the 19th question which is happens to be the 29th question of the science and environment question which we are decoding and this one i hope most of you might have got right because we had discussed this theme thoroughly in lectures as well as in the current affairs part the uh, the it's about the covid vaccines now we know the two major vaccine which were used in the after the second wave were covid vaccine and covid shield so you have to differentiate those two vaccines so first statement says the serum institute of india produced covid 19 vaccine the statement is correct till now because we know oxford astrazeneca has developed that vaccine but it was produced by serum institute only Uh, named covid shield using mrna platform now you have to understand it's a viral vector vaccine a live adenovirus is used uh, as a vector so it's not a mrna vaccine only pfizer moderna vaccines were the mrna vaccine but we could not use them because we didn't had the adequate cold storage facility so first option is wrong sputnik v which is the russian the first ever vaccine which was developed by russia is you a vector based platform you have seen that it's a live adenovirus is used and two separate uh, doses are uh, given so second statement is correct and co vaccine you have seen that it had the least after effect because it is based on dead virus which are referred as inactivated viral vaccines so we have to choose two and three and finally the last question is on solar flare the solar flare recently was in news if you are uh, were covering current affairs in 2022 right till the end so we had covered uh, this uh, theme in our class lectures the there was a the biggest solar flare which was recently in news in that uh, news they had clearly highlighted how the communication network could get interrupted for briefly or you could say the satellites are at risk or uh, there could be a power grid failure so this is one of the lengthiest question in the given paper because it has seven you could say applications or you could say potential effects which they have mentioned out of which you have there were two option which were quite uh, you could say the blunder ones the first is tsunami because we know that it's tsunami is triggered through an earthquake to continental plate movement solar flare has nothing to do with it and the another one is the forest fire forest fires Uh, cannot uh, even though they are caused by lightning at time but the solar flare the solar storm which mainly affect the magnetic electric field it cannot be associated with the forest fire thing otherwise the rest option like the short radio wave communication 
uh, orbits of satellite being disrupted or auroras which we see northern light northern borealis they are influenced by the solar flare and also the gps navigation system so you have to choose the c option 1 3 4 6 and 7 so this was what uh, was asked in the science and uh, environment section so overall we can say there were 30 questions you could say one third paper so if you had considerable hold over this section and you have managed to score uh, you could say around 14 to 15 questions correct uh, and uh, not managed too much negative marking then you can say you have done exceptionally well in this section because this uh, section was uh, on tougher side once again uh, but if you are a seasoned uh, UPSC, you could say uh, aspirant who has appeared already in multiple prelims or mains then the science part more or less you might have uh, arrived at the right answers through guesswork and your score could be somewhere around even 18 or 19 as well so that could be a bonus for you so overall we can say the paper was uh, on tougher side and for cutoff speculation uh, there is a telegram channel you could uh, uh, mention your likely cutoff scale to if you are interested in it. Otherwise, it, the best way is to just focus on your main preparation irrespective of the result because these next three months are if you invest in your main preparation, they will definitely give you in dividends. More or less, uh, if uh, cross check your answers from two or three answer keys because there are not too many controversial questions this time, more or less you will see similarity in answer keys displayed by numerous institutes. So if you have any question which you feel has not been addressed or you feel like asking any doubts, you can ask them in comment section. I will try to answer the genuine uh, queries. So thank you very much. I hope it, this small uh, update on science and environment section was useful in some way to you. Feel free to connect if something is bothering you. Thank you very much. Have a nice day.